Shalom. Let us study commandments of Yeshua. We will continue studying this topic. And today we will talk about servants of the covenant. Now I would like to open Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 and read this for you. You are the salt of the earth, says Yeshua. But if the salt should lose its flavor, how shall it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by man. We are familiar with this phrase, you are the salt of the earth. What is the salt? Many times we probably heard that the salt preserves food, the salt adds some taste to the food, and we have to be like the salt, adding some flavor, some taste, preserving something. Actually, many theologians, they hold this position, and partially I would agree with them. For example, uh, Noland, he says, apart from the obvious role of salt in flavoring and preserving, in the ancient world, it was seen as a purifying or cleansing agent. Well, partially, like I said, I would agree. And even uh, this is, uh, actually, this is something classical. Classical uh, Christian commentary, Matthew Henry, mankind lying in ignorance and wickedness, were as a vast heap ready to putrefy. But Christ sent forth his disciples by their lives and doctrines to season it with knowledge and grace. As for me, I respect and love Matthew Henry. Uh, many important and nice thoughts are found there in his books, however, I have a question, and let me be sarcastic. So, here he says that uh, we or other people were as a vast heap. Okay, so let's imagine a huge heap of manure. Then I have a question. If we add salt uh, to this manure, what will happen to this manure? What will happen to this heap? Well, uh, probably it will be preserved. Maybe... Uh, well, but this is exactly what Matthew Henry says. And in my opinion, it's not sufficient. In my opinion, we should provide the correct interpretation. And it can be a theological interpretation or a metaphorical interpretation. So, let's see what we can find. And in order to find the theological interpretation, we have to ask a simple question. What does the Torah say about the salt? At least two times the salt is mentioned in the context of sacrifices and the covenant. Let us read these verses. So, verse number one is found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 2, verse 13. And here it is. You shall season your every offering of meal with salt. You shall not omit from your meal offering the salt of your covenant with God. With all your offerings, you must offer salt. Thus says the Lord. Here we have certain key words. Number one, we have the offering. So, people are supposed to bring their offerings. And the key word number two is salt. You shall season your every offering of meal with salt. And not only just salt, but the salt is called the salt of the covenant. Actually, I like uh, the interpretation when uh, the commentators say about this verse that we have the salt, the salt of your covenant with God as something permanent. Permanently binding. We have a permanent nature or binding nature of the covenant. So, the salt makes something constant, binding and permanent. As you can see, here we have this salt which goes along with the offerings. 
the verse number two, which I would like to read for you, is this. All the sacred gifts that the Israelites set aside for the Lord, I give to you, to your sons and to the daughters that are with you, as a due for all time. It shall be an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord for you and for your offspring as well. So, again we have this salt here. The salt is in the text. And the covenant is called the everlasting covenant of salt. So, previously we had the salt of the covenant. Now, even better, we have the covenant of salt. Now Yeshua brings the new covenant where his disciples play a role of the salt. The good news is you are the salt of the covenant. So when we talk about the salt, it's a good idea that the salt preserves. It's a good idea that the salt adds fl some flavor. But even better idea is to look at the Torah and to find that the covenant is called the everlasting covenant of salt. And Yeshua comes and brings the new covenant. And what's, what is interesting, you are the salt of this covenant. And also we can have some metaphorical interpretation. And again, it should be found in the Holy Scripture. I believe we should open one of Paul's letters and find these words. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, to know how you ought to answer everyone. Speech seasoned. I like this. So, Paul calls us to use this seasoned speech, words with wisdom. This is what likely he means here. The words, our words should be with wisdom. We should become wise thanks to God's spirit and share his wisdom with the world. And the core idea of being wise in God is knowing his Messiah. When we know his Messiah, we are wise and our speech is seasoned with this Salt. And then we can read from Matthew. Again, we go back to chapter 5, verse 14. Yeshua teaches us, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. First of all, light is created at the beginning. Israel was called to be light. I would like to read Isaiah 49, 6 for you. He says, It is... Too small a thing that you should be my servant. To raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also make you a light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Uh, listen to these words. God talks about his servant who is likely the Messiah. That's why in conservative Bibles, the servant is written with a capital S. And then we see that this servant, the Messiah, is sent to be the light of the nations. So that salvation of God can reach everywhere, every person on the earth. And interestingly, the servant or Messiah is the light. And now Yeshua says, you are the light. We see that the covenant is built with the salt. And we see that the Messiah is the light of the world and he is sent to shine. And now he shares this responsibility with us. He says, you are the salt. You are the light. It is amazing. I continue reading Matthew chapter 5, verse 15. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on a lampstand, so it gives light to all in the house. So, we cannot be the light of the entire world. But 
our Messiah says, begin with your house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Messiah talks about good works. Yeshua talks about our good deeds which help other people to see God's light. The main way how we can spread the message about the Messiah is our good works. If you act properly, people see Messiah in your deeds. And there is one more important thing here. I would like to discuss some ideas of Greek grammar. Let me show you some uh, interesting things uh, from Greek grammar. They have a hortatory subjunctive. It is used to command or to urge. Let us do. Well, also, they have present imperative. Just do it. They have future indicative. You shall do. And also, they have constative orist imperative. A solemn or categorical command. For example, make this your top priority. When you read, let your light shine. What type of command would you expect in Greek? Obviously subjunctive. And interestingly enough, when you open your Greek Bible, you will find lampsato. This is third singular orist active imperative to shine. In other words, you do not have something like a subjunctive here. You have the most strict imperative. And I would say uh, to translate this, uh, we should say thus your light must shine. It must be like this. It's not let it be. This is a commandment. If your disciples shine, if you are followers, spread the gospel. If you are real Christians, show it. We cannot have a real covenant with God without keeping his commandments. And here are two commandments of Yeshua. Be the salt and shine. And this will help to spread the gospel. Salt and light provide two pictures of covenant identity and mission that are now define the disciples of Yeshua. Are you disciples? If yes, let us be the salt. Let us shine. Let us remember that we must be the salt and we must shine. Let us be true disciples. Let us be true servants of the covenant.